Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'll be talking about what I read and watched from Norway for Invisible Cities Project. I'll start with what I read, which was The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Shirsti Anastater Schwansfold. I think. <laughs> Translated by Carrie A. Pierce. In a nutshell, this book is about a, an elderly woman who uh, decides that she needs to really live her life um, because she hasn't been doing that and her own introverted personality is, has been holding her back from really living her life and she realizes this as she's coming to the end of her life. I'll start by saying I think I did this book a bit of a disservice by reading it in sort of lots of little chunks. Um, when I think it would be best read all it at one time in one sitting. I would class this book as fitting into um, a recent, I mean, last few years trend of quirky woman books. And those can be really fun, but I also find they can be a little bit gimmicky. It's in the wheelhouse of leaning pretty heavily on extreme introvert tropes, I guess. Um, which is really fun and sometimes very relatable, but it can also get tired a bit fast, so that's partly why I think this would be best read all in one chunk so that it doesn't sort of break up your suspension of disbelief or um, draw out the, the, the gimmick, for lack of a better word, if it's not all read in one kind of quick session. The beginning and the end of this in particular were very strong for me, um, but there was a point in the middle where I started to feel a little bit... Um, uncomfortable, I guess, with what felt like obviously a young person's portrayal of an aged person um, that was so irreverent as to feel un not insightful um, or un uninteresting almost. Um, and this is actually a really difficult thing for me to explain because I think it sounds overly insulting to the book and to the writer. And what I mean more is that um, there's a lot that goes along with the whole package of aging. And for me personally, in my life right now, I um, am dealing with a lot of those things that puts me um, right in full view of what that really looks like, um, what old age really looks like. And so when she's talking about things like oh, you know, I'm almost 90 and all my teeth fell out and, you know, oh, isn't this a quaint problem to have and, oh, I'm so quirky, like, that kind of thing. It can be a little bit, um, it can be a little bit tiresome to read sometimes. Um, and it feels so directed at, it feels like even when we have this older protagonist, we're still so concerned with young people problems in a way. It feels like the perspective is not at all insightful or, or considering of um, that older person's actual perspective. So there was that element for me. But by the end, I felt like uh, the book is not trying to give insight in what it is to be an older person or what you might feel like at the end of your life. I think the whole point is this idea of living your fullest life whatever that might mean, even as our protagonist apparently fails to do so. Um, so I, I am a little bit torn on how I feel about this book ultimately. It didn't move me um, and it didn't stick with me in the way that I had hoped that it maybe might. It seemed at first like it might be my kind of humour, um, but it didn't quite work for me. That said, I think I would still recommend it because it's short enough that I think most people would be able to just blast through it in one sitting and get a lot of entertainment out of it, um, as well as feeling something a little bit deeper than, like me, having stretched it out over, like, I don't know, like over a month or something like that in tiny reading sessions, which I think was just the worst way to read this book. And now that I come to the end of talking about that book, I also feel like there's this um, trend in when I'm talking about uh, books or films or anything like that. I think a lot of the time when I'm reviewing things, I tend to also talk about the things that I didn't enjoy about uh, that stuff. And I don't know why I do that. I feel like I'm almost trying to, I don't know, set up other people's expectations 
properly so that they can really enjoy the thing, maybe? I, I'm not sure. Uh, but I just want to say that when I am talking about the negative aspects of uh, a book I read or a film that I watched, um, that's not to say that you shouldn't watch or read that thing. That's just to say, oh, this is also there. But um, I, that doesn't mean that I didn't uh, enjoy the thing. I watched two movies for Norway in March, and the first one was Out of Nature. This one follows a man who is tired of his of his life. I feel like this is a trend. Um, this follows a man who is bored with his life. He feels like he's not living his life to the full. Um, is this a thing in Norway? Um, and he feels like he's in a bit of a rut. And so one weekend he goes out into nature on this um, camping trip and he's just thinking about all of the things. Um, it's uh, almost stream of consciousness. And we are inside of his mind listening to all of these thoughts. Um, and it's a dark comedy. There's a lot of um, sexiness, <laughs> as in like there's uh, nudity and sexual content and that kind of stuff. Just so you're aware in case that's something that makes you uncomfortable to watch. This guy is not happy in his um, marriage. He feels like he's not um, involved enough socially at work, uh, doesn't really have friends like that, um, is feeling very isolated, and all sorts of other things that I think are pretty, pretty generally relatable um, to a lot of people, even though I, ultimately this movie could also feel a little bit like white dude problems, um, but I didn't feel like it had that kind of aggressive incel feeling that a lot of um, American Hollywood type of films that talk about a guy who's tired of his marriage and life and blah 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 tend to have. I love the way that the film achieves this sort of intimacy with the viewer by using a lot of close-ups with shallow depth of field and it kind of matches the stream of consciousness uh, narration that we have um, as we follow his thoughts. And the Norwegian landscape that he's traveling through is absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like all of those things kind of um, get us into a, a visually introspective feeling place as we're viewing the film. It's funny as well because these um, calming um, and intimate visuals make the vulgarity of the more um, sexual scenes uh, even more in your face, which I think can be a little bit uncomfortable, but there's also something interesting in that rawness. And that again kind of feels like it is also mimicking that um, intimate internal monologue. And I can definitely see how this could be read, like I said, as a white dude problems kind of film. And it's unfortunate that the female co-director's name was left off of the poster, which makes it feel even more um, like that. Um, but I do feel like overall the content of the film is pretty universally relatable. Um, and by that I don't mean necessarily the specific situation, but just that feeling of isolation, that feeling of not being in the right place, um, not uh, physically, but like not being in the right place in your life, um, not being able to identify why that feeling is there. Running through these scenarios, some of them extreme and offensive, some of them really small and insignificant seeming that um, if only things were like this, maybe that would make a difference, but maybe it's me. There's also a lot of doubt put in there because even as he is sometimes blaming external forces, he's also sometimes um, wondering is it me? And so I think all of that adds to it feeling um, pretty relatable and just a really interesting piece. It didn't hit as strongly as I think it could have done and I'm not entirely sure why that is. I don't know if it's because personally I am, am not super attracted to these storylines of um, drifting away from one's partner. I find those overall just a little bit boring um, in general or if it's just because it didn't quite hit hard enough um, when it needed to to really make a huge impact on me but overall I did like the film and I think if you don't mind some occasional uh, raw vulgarity then uh, this might be one to check out. I can't just write it, I can't even write it, I can't even write it. Kose, dere, and hils de andre. Martin. Perfect. You 
er må begrunne det. Hvis ikke jeg gjør noe med livet mitt, så er det sånn her det blir. Da må det først. Hva er du? Salma laks hver fredag. Kanskje tak over seg heldig. Han sikker de som gråter av idol eller norske talenter, men så svelger de gråten ned uten å si noen ting. Jeg kommer til å gjøre alt det der. Jeg kommer til å være trofast og lojal og pliktoppfyllende. Jeg trenger en runk. Hei! Hei nå! Da ville jeg bare være her og aldri komme tilbake. Jeg vil at livet skal bli noe annet. Og nå har jeg muligheten. Next, I watched Grit, which started out really strong for me, but ultimately left me a little bit unsatisfied, and I've been thinking a lot about why, and the more that I think about why, the more I actually um, kind of, not forgive it, because there's nothing to forgive, but um, the more I kind of feel like, maybe it's just me. But the film is about Grit, who's looking to start a career in uh, the arts, um, specifically the performing arts, and she's sort of an actress, sort of a director. She just wants to be involved in that world, basically. And we follow her in the beginning through applying for a grant and talking about this project that she really wants to do. And for me, it's really interesting for us to get this peek into the arts industry, the bureaucracy of it, who gets to tell stories and why they're telling these stories and how they're telling these stories and the way that some of this bureaucracy can sometimes stifle diversity um, or can or can cherry pick diversity and uh, all of these other really interesting topics interesting to me I'm um, seeing how funding works in the arts industry um, and when I talk about the arts industry I mean more specifically about performing arts because this is something that works a little bit different from the arts industry that I am part of I love the sort of meta moment where she's discussing her project with another actress and slash director and their project and she kind of says something along the lines of be careful of making the project become just an indulgence as opposed to a statement and it kind of feels like this whole film almost um, is showing that but I also felt like I was watching two separate films and I preferred the first part so in the first part is where we get all of that stuff that I've just been talking about and the second part is um, the second part feels like it sort of dissolves into something a lot more self-indulgent in a way that doesn't feel like it quite fits but then arguably it entirely fits it feels like the first half of the film is building this slow crescendo of oh my god but then it kind of disintegrates into sort of a oh now i guess we're here um and it feels a lot like if this is supposed to symbolize hitting rock bottom then i want to hit rock bottom in norway because <laughs> this is ridiculous i felt flooded with this feeling of i'm just watching this really privileged person um have a hard time which is, is a weird thing for me to watch in the first place because on the one hand I feel like if you're having problems, particularly mental health issues, uh, it doesn't matter what your privileges are, that's something that needs to be attended to. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I guess it, it I guess it's a reflection on um, people in my industry in general where it's like, um, yes, your problems are valid, but also you have it pretty good to if this is what your problems are in a way. It feels like that gilded cage thing, like, you know, even if your cage is made out of gold, it's still a cage, that thing. 
and I don't really want to make this super full of spoilers and stuff, so I'm going to leave my letterbox review for this one in the description box, and you can check that out if you want to, but it is filled with spoilers. And this is, you know, saying a lot of the things that I'm saying here, but I think maybe a little bit better explained probably because it's not just off the top of my head. But again, I wanna say that even though I had all of these um, thoughts when watching the film and even though I didn't quite um, live up to what that beginning bit was building uh, for me personally, I still felt like it was a really good film. It was really well shot, well acted. And I liked this thing that they kept doing in the film where Grit starts to say something and then she doesn't quite finish it and it feels um, sort of like, and it feels sort of like uh, how she approaches everything where she starts a thing really enthusiastically and then kind of is hoping that other people or fate or something, I don't know, something else will fill in the blanks. It's like she doesn't really know where she's going with that. She just starts a thing. Um, and, and hopes for the best and I, I feel like that small device was just um, really satisfying. There was also a lot of um, witchiness and mysticism and stuff, well not a lot but th there's a good portion of witchiness and mysticism and stuff like that and sometimes that works really well for me and sometimes less so and it felt a little bit out of place for me in this um, to be honest with you um, but I don't know, it's fine, um, but it did kind of add to it feeling like the second part of the film and the first part of the film were quite different films. I mean, they weren't super different films, but it felt like I was watching two um, fairly different acts, I suppose, um, and I just was more drawn to the first act than the second. That said, I felt like this portrayal of witchiness was um, one of the least male gaze type portrayals of witchiness that I've seen uh, maybe ever, or at least in a very, very, very long time, um, and I really appreciated that. And maybe that's to be expected from a female director. Even though this didn't pack quite the punch that I thought it was going to based on the beginning of it, I still really liked it and I would recommend it, especially for the beginning. But I think for all of the discussion, the internal self-discussion for all of the things that it has made me think about and whether I feel like it worked or not or whether, whether I feel like it achieved what I think it's setting out to achieve or not, whether what kind of commentary it's giving and on what kinds of things. I think it was still really valuable for all of those reasons. I work with men there, like, so... Welcome to day two of the Norwegian Culture Festival. Men Grit, er skuespiller da? Mm. Ja. Jeg driver ikke med noe kunst. Nei. Jeg er kunstner. Nå. Ja, akkurat nå har jeg et ganske stort projekt som skal være et mer sånn kollektivt ritual. Ja, men så er det bra. Du har gått litt vekk fra det der gjestelige store skuespillet på en måte. Nei. Det er en slags ritual, men i hvert fall det handler på en måte om å på en måte prøve å bryte løs. Spesielt som kvinne, egentlig. Ja, for å synliggjøre den betennelsen som ligger over oss, så jeg har en søknad inn hos Kulturråden også. Søknaden er avvist. Hæ? Har du ever hatt en crunch melt before? This looks bad. Nei, men går det bra med deg nå? Hva gjør du? Hva skal du gjøre nå da, Grit, Jeanette? Eller Grit? Eh, hva heter det? You're trapped, and you're not able to see the way out. Okay. You need to pay attention to what you really are. To what you really want. What did you live for? as artists to break the structures of the mind, to break the systems in society. There is a uh, poison. No, 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 those tunnels. That is job, family. I'm so overwhelmed that I fall. This is a and it's there we also come in with our stick. i luften som minner om forandring eller oppvåkning. 
Armageddon. And that is what I read and watched from Norway for Invisible Cities Project. Um, it's a little late, I know, but better late than never. That's all for now, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.